G'day, my name is Stephen Seafeld and uh, this is the first part of a three-part tutorial on uh, creating realistic looking gemstones with V-Ray and uh, also animating them inside Max with uh, Reactor. So before we can do any of that of course we actually need to have our gemstones so uh, let's build one. And to do that obviously we need to know what they look like. So if you go to Google type in faceting diagrams, we get a number of websites. We're going to go to the US Faceters Guild, there's rockhounds.com, DJ Gems, there's heaps. A faceting diagram is basically a blueprint used by real world gem cutters to create the gemstones that you see in rings out of the raw rocks. And uh, as you can see, they're perfect for our needs in 3D because they give us top, front and sides. If you're a real stickler for real world accuracy when you're doing your rendering and ray tracing, you can actually build the uh, data, build these plans yourself out of all this data here. This has all the angles of every single line, uh, ratios, everything you need to build it to real world standards. One thing that's really important though is uh, the RI, the index of refraction for each of these gems is stored here and you'll need that for later on when you're making your materials. Anyway, let's just take the Brown Brilliant Classic and save that out and load it up in your favourite editor. I'm going to use uh, Photoshop obviously. So, now uh, all we're going to do now is just cut these out into a side, bottom and top plate. There are many different types of gemstones. Uh, this one is called a brilliant cut. Uh, and the good thing about brilliant cuts is that they're specifically designed to uh, refract light out of them onto surrounding areas. Uh, things like diamonds are uh, brilliant cuts. Uh, there's all sorts of other cuts, you know, like uh, say a ruby. They are designed to trap light inside them to actually continually bounce the light around and not let it escape, creating very deep, dark looking uh, gems. Very you know, warm colours. I'm just going to Control C for new, uh, Control C for copy, Control N for new, and Control B for paste. Okay, and that was just the straight line lasso tool, if uh, you were wondering. So let's just check these image dimensions. 107, 107, 107. Seven hundred thirty. I'm just rounding these off. I'm not too worried about it being perfect to real world. Uh, this will be close enough. Save as top. Save as bottom. Save as side. Okay, let's get into Max now. First thing we need to do is create two boxes in the top viewport for our plates. I, when creating uh, modeling or doing rigging, I like to work in world space as much as possible. I have a choice. And I'll show you why and see why in the coming tutorial. So the top plate was 187. 187, zero height. And the second one was 130, 187, zero length. Okay, so here's our plates. First thing we want to do is align the plates. See, this needs to be down here. So we could eyeball it. But why bother? Because we'd be working in world space. 
works means that we can simply use the World Transform tool. All you've got to do is right click on say move or rotate and I can right click on these and set them all to zero and now that box is exactly at zero zero in the center. And alternatively for this guy, instead of eyeballing it, I align a pivot, so effect pivot only in the hierarchy menu, center it first, and then align the pivot to its own object on the Z, which is up at maximum. It's going to move that pivot right to the very top of that box. And now, this it aligns for us and perfectly at that no errors at all and you'll always get some errors when you're aligning by sign if your uh, objects look strange you might want to just check that in object properties they have back face cull enabled there's actually an option in viewports in preferences to turn that on you might want to check that Okay, let's make our materials now. Top. Side. Bottom. Then you just simply want to come in here and select your PSDs that you created before. apply these to your objects and you also just want to turn on the show map in viewport button okay so we're ready to go we're going to start our modeling if you have a quick look at this basically what you see is that this is just a star and a couple of oblongs a couple of n-gons uh, three n-gons to be precise so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, that's eight sided N-Gon. So go into shapes and create an eight sided N-Gon. Align it to weld so we don't have to worry about anything being out of place. And that looks quite comfy at 50. And if we just make copy of this, we can realign it to world, this one's 16, and that looks quite comfy at about 92.5. Okay. I'm just going to switch into shapes mode so I can only collect the shapes. I'm going to copy that for future. Make another copy. Realign. Shrink it and go back to eight sides. Now, just an interesting fact is if you rotate an eight sided star or a eight sided engon because a you know a star is basically just a fancy engon with a second radius. And if you rotate it at twenty two point five it'll flatten out. <coughs> okay so let's just find a nice position for that. How about sixty four? Good. Geometry, hide that sucker, and here's our basic shapes. Convert that into an edit spline. And notice I did that on the top one because we could do it in the center, but I did it on the top one. This object here has actually got a rotation in its transform, and we don't want that to translate onto our finished object. So we're going to attach everything to the outside un affected 